And I will bless those that bless you. And I will curse those that curse you. Mm. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Put your hands together if you are the seed of Abraham. Go ahead and celebrate God for the victory he has given to us this morning. He is here. He is here in our means. His name is Emmanuel. God with us. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I they walk. Say, they walk. Say, I they walk. So the word of God works. Amen. And many shall see through your lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. I want to welcome all of you to our dedication and testimony service. Today is a great day indeed because God has brought us here in this special service of dedication and testimony. I believe somebody is next to testify. And I believe that somebody will join me also in testifying today. The book of Exodus 15 verses 22. And when you are there as a church, let me hear you say amen. The book of Exodus 15, verses 22, the Bible says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness, and they found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. And therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we therefore drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. And there he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them and said, If thou be diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and if you will do what is right in his sight, and will give ears to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he led thee. And they came to Elim, where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees, or some translation says three score and 10 palm trees. And they encamped there by the waters. Please look at verses 25 for me. Bible says, and he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. May God, in this prophetic service, open our eyes at all times to see and to discover the answers, the solutions of our problems. Instead of us sitting there and complaining, may we be solution seekers, answer finders in the mighty name of Jesus. Verses 25, he said, And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters was made sweet. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. The grass fades, the flower withers. But your word, O Lord, abided forever. In this next few moments, I pray, Almighty God, that you will draw the weight of your glory around us. Anoint my tongue as your anointed servant. Let it be like the pen of the ready writer. Open the mind and the hearts of your people to receive the word of God. And all the people of God said aloud. Amen. They said aloud. Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor on the left and on the right before you get seated. And tell them from bitter waters 
to sweet waters. From bitter waters to sweet waters. Sit down in the presence of the Lord. It's like God is doing a work in our waters. Somebody can shout a louder amen. amen. If they've caught a revelation, shout your loudest amen. 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 The Bible says in Psalm 107 verses 20, he said he sent forth his word. He sent forth what? His word. I want to indulge each and every one of us to not play with the word that comes from this altar. The word from this altar, they are spirit and they are life. They are life transforming. They are strategic for your lifting. They are strategic for your breakthrough. They are strategic for your turnaround. They are strategic, most especially in a service like this, for your possession of your testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. And this service is very strategic because I see many testimonies breaking forth from this, from this service in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout, I love my church. Come rain, come sunshine, there is no place like home. I love what God has given to me. I don't know about you, but I love my church. Let the whole of Abuja hear it. I love my church. Let the whole nation know it. I love my church. Let the universe hear it. I love my church. I had to just pitch that in right there. I had to put it in because that is what I feel for this church. I love my church. Amen. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. Hallelujah. The word of God to me today is that somebody here after now, your bitterness shall turn to sweetness. Your bitterness. Maybe you have not been bitter. Maybe you have not been experiencing any bitter experience. Maybe this word is not for you, but for some people that know what pastor is talking about. God woke me up and said, tell my people that I am turning their bitterness. I am turning the bitterness in their life into sweetness. I say I am turning everything that constitutes to that word bitterness into to the word sweetness. There is about to be a change in the story, in the life of somebody here this morning. God said, tell my people, I don't know who I've come here for. I don't know who God is speaking to. But if you want me to know, I can locate you. But I prefer your, you yourself to have your faith and say, pastor, preach it. This word is for me. God said, tell him, tell her, I am turning their bitterness into sweetness. I said, I'm turning their bitterness into what? Into sweetness. Hallelujah. As I was praying for this service, the Lord said, in this service, I'm going to turn bitter waters into sweet waters. And I began to ask the Lord, I said, Lord, what do you mean by that? And the Lord said to me that there are so many people who are silently, silently, and some even loudly going through diverse situations. They are going through bitterness in their life. They are going through bitterness in their finances. They are going through bitterness in their health. Their health was not like this before. But it is not the way it used to be. A bitterness has entered even in the health. There is bitterness in their business. There is bitterness coming in and going out. It is not business as usual. But God said I should tell somebody that in this service, there shall be healing in your life. That in this service, there shall be healing in your marriage. 
Yes, those marital issues you are silently harboring and keeping within yourself. God says, I have heard your prayer and I'm about to turn the bitterness of marriage into sweetness in marriage. There shall be healing in your finances. There shall be healing in your careers. There shall be healing in your endeavors. There shall be healing in everything you lay your hands to do. God says, I will heal your bitter waters. Whatever has come to remove the flavor of your life, the flavor of your taste. He says, I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to turn it to sweet waters. He says, I will turn it to sweet waters. Your marriage shall be sweet again. Your career shall look prosperous again. There shall be prospect in that career. If it looks bleak today, God says, I'm about to turn it around. What the enemy had meant for evil, God says I will turn it around for good your health shall be sweet again your career shall be sweet again your business shall be sweet again somebody say Lord make it sweet say Lord make it sweet if you are that one shout hallelujah shout hallelujah say bitterness Bitter waters to sweet waters. Ah, there's healing taking place in this ministry. There's healing taking place in the lives of God's people. There's healing taking place. It's been taking place since last week. And God is not finished with somebody. God sent me here this morning to tell somebody what I'm about to do in your life. Those that mocked you and laughed you too early. With their own eyes they shall see the power of God. That God is not a respecter of any man. When God says yes no man can say no when god says i've not finished with you this is just a process no devil in hell can shut the door that i'm about to open in your life right before their eyes i will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy you shall drive that car in the presence of your enemy they shall hear of your ascension in the presence of your enemy they shall see your promotion right in the place they taught you we're about to quit very soon very soon very soon your bank account is about to have a shaking inside of it the savings account hey, the current account the dollar account the pound sterling account whatever constitutes to money there is about to be a flow in the currencies in the name of jesus i said in the name of jesus father turn our bitter waters into sweet waters there's somebody that is here for a miracle there's somebody that god has said i am healing their waters this is the time on this 11th month for healings to take place so that we can be able to finish strong kindly be seated the bible says in our text that we've just read this morning in the book of exodus 15 the Bible says that the people of Israel, they had just left from Egypt. In this particular text, we see that they had just left from Egypt. Please follow me. And they were in Egypt. When they were in Egypt, they were crying. Things were not working for them. And God delivered them out of Egypt and brought them. They came from Egypt and as they left Egypt, they encountered a Red Sea. Bible makes it very clear that as they got to the Red Sea, they did what again? They cried at the Red Sea. And God brought about mighty deliverance at that Red Sea. It said, and they came to the Red Sea and they began to cry again. And from the Red Sea, the Bible says they entered another trouble. After they finished being delivered, as they left the Red Sea, they now went from there into the wilderness. And they entered Mara. They went from wilderness into a three days. Bible records it in that Exodus 15 of no water. A three days where they had no water. And when they finally found water, the Bible says the water was undrinkable because it was bitter. And they called it Mara. 
They finally found water to drink. And after these three days, when they were about to drink this thing, they were about to enjoy this miracle. They were about to enjoy this thing that was set before them that should be enjoyable. All of a sudden, as they put it in their mouth, they realized that ah, this thing is bitter. It was not sweet. It was undrinkable water. They could not drink it. Hallelujah. It looked to me that they were going from one problem to another problem. Every stage of their life was characterized by problems. And there are some people here that every phase of your life has not been easy. It has not been rosy. It has been one battle after another battle. It was a battle for you to come to Abuja. And since you got to Abuja, it's been a battle for you to survive. A battle to get a job. A battle to get another job. A battle to sustain what you have. A battle to put food on the table. Before you got married, it was a battle. When you got married, it's still a battle in the marriage. Before you got children, while others, it was easy for them to have it. Your own was a battle. This is what I call a pattern of bitterness. Somebody shout, turn my bitterness. Say, turn my bitterness into sweetness in the mighty name of Jesus. And this is where I must prophesy. I don't know what bitterness it has been in your life or what bitterness there is. Some of us, you know, we, we look fine from the outer appearance, but deep down inside of us, if people could only see what we are passing through, if people could only see what we are going through, they will understand that don't be fooled by what you see on the outside, that the just does not walk by sight, but that they walk by faith. And the power and the strength of a man lies on his inside and not on his outside. And that is why you cannot afford for your inside to be bitter. You cannot afford for your inside to be broken. You cannot afford for your inside to be messed up. Hallelujah, somebody. Because the God that we serve sent me this morning to tell somebody your new beginning is here. I said your new beginning is here. Every bad water, every bitter water in that area you've been fighting for, in that area you've been struggling. Maybe you are financially settled in one area, but you are fighting maritally on some issues in another area. Maybe you are happy in your career, but you cannot still be settled in the area you need settlement. Whatever it may be, there is a God that has the transforming power, the turning power power to change things around. Mm. Prophet, man of God, come and expatiate. Turn these bitter waters into sweet waters. That is how they cried unto Elisha last week and they said, man of God, the city is beautiful. Everything looks good from the outside. But don't be fooled, man of God, by what you are seeing on the outside. We need divine intervention because the water in this city is bad. Don't be fooled by what I am wearing. Somebody gave me this outfit, but the bank account is bad. The situation is bad. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know where there is bitterness in your life, but after today, you are moving to sweetness. After today, you are moving to sweetness. Sweet waters. Sweet life, sweet relationships. Hey, some relationships they are not sweet too. Sweet relationships, sweet career, sweet children, the kind of children that will give you rest. God is about to settle somebody in this prophetic service of testimony and dedication. Sweet marriage. Marriage that is supposed to be like a honeymoon from now till eternity. Somebody shout sweet waters. 
Say sweet waters. The kind of marriage that once you are in it, you know you have arrived. Not the one you've been fighting every day. Wanting after another. Hallelujah. God will move somebody into sweetness. Sweet waters, sweet relationship, sweet career. Yes, there's some people, they are going from glory to glory. Some certain things you are going through, they don't understand it. They don't go through it. Your own is different and it's unique. Don't think that what you are going through is normal. Some people don't know about what you can go through and what you are going through. If you are talking to them, they are looking at you as if you are a ghost because they are not experiencing that. But one thing is for sure that if God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Turn my life to sweetness, O Lord. Turn our life to sweetness and let the waters become sweet again. Let our lives become sweet again. Let our testimonies be sweet testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. The kind of one that will save a whole city. The kind of one like the, that, like the uh, Samaritan woman that could bring about a whole city. Those kind of testimony that can shake the waters. Father, we want unusual testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever we have been experiencing bitterness, Lord, put your sweetness inside of it. Turn our bitter waters, turn our bad waters into sweet waters. Turn that situation that we are privately praying about into a sweet outcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Some of you are too passive and silent for there to be transformation, for there to be a change of story, for there to be a turnaround because this year will not pass me by. This year will not finish anyhow. This year will be my best year. It has not finished. There are many days of testimony. There are many days of glory. There are many days of rejoicing. There are many days of dancing. There's a new song this year year. There's a new book this year. There is a new chapter this year. There is a new season for somebody this year. What you receive this year is what is going to put you into what you are going to see next year. Am I talking to somebody in this place? Go to seven people and tell them sweetness, 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 sweetness. Tell them sweetness. Number seven, a number of perfection and completion. Say receive the sweetness of life. Receive the sweet chapters of life. Receive the sweet blessings of life. Everything that has come to make us bitter, to make that situation bitter, to prolong that problem, to Day we bring an end to it. Every prolonged issue, every prolonged sickness, every prolonged chapter, today we bring an end to it. We say enough is enough. Man of God, speak to us. For this is our season. This is our season. And we shall finish strong. We shall finish with the best of 2022. We shall finish stronger than ever. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the book of Numbers 33 verses 9. The book of Numbers 33 verses 9. I like how the Bible puts it. In Numbers 33 verses 9. The Bible says. And removed from Mara. And came to Elim. What is Mara? I said Mara means bitterness. And what was in Elim? Elim was a place where there was 22 wells of water. The Bible says that they removed from Mara and they entered Elim. A translation says they moved. Another one said they removed. Me, I'm looking at they removed from Mara. Something was removed from Mara. Hmm. And it was put into Elim. Amen, somebody. I stretch my hands over you and I remove you from every bitterness. I remove you from every Mara experience. In this latter part of the year, every Mara must give way. Every Mara situation must give way. I stretch my hand over this church over this commission, over this service right now. And I say, I remove us from every bitterness, 
everything that will cause us to lose our flavor, that will cause us to lose our taste, that will cause us to lose the salt of our life. Today, I stretch my hand like Moses stretched his rod towards the Red Sea. Oh my God and my Father and the same God that parted the Red Sea, the same God that did a supernatural miracle in the eyes of Israel, in the eyes of the Egyptian, is the same God today that is about to do a mighty and supernatural miracle for somebody, even in a service like that, you will say what is this? You say, oh God, can a miracle happen here? A miracle can happen anywhere God predestines you to be. A miracle can happen anywhere he needs you to be. God sent me today for somebody is about to cross the Red Sea. The Red Sea of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I said it's about to cross the Red Sea of their life in the name of Jesus. Before this time next month. I kept on saying something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. And come and see many testimonies taking place all over the place. Something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. Till last week Sunday. Something is about to happen. The person who is saying something is about to happen got her own testimony. If I was you, I won't clap that. There are testimonies and there are testimonies. There are levels in testimonies. If I was you, I would clap in such a way that I would not miss out on this one. I would be a partaker of what God is doing at such a time like this. What God can do for somebody, he can do for me. What God can do for A, he can do for B. Tap into it and say, this is my season. The waters are being healed in the mighty name of Jesus. I say in the mighty name of Jesus, we move out from poverty. We move out from death. We move out from stagnation. We move out from nothing, nothing. We move out of, oh, small beginnings. We move out of that season and we enter into abundance. We enter into wealth. We enter into finishing strong in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This God we serve is to be reverenced. He is to be honored. He can do it at any point in time. That is why you never play with any moment. You never play with any service. You never play with your service to God. Because as you keep going on and doing what God has called you, God is faithful to meet you at your very point of need. Right where you are. Hallelujah somebody. I said hallelujah somebody. I like what it says. In the King James Version, it said they removed from Mara, meaning in other words, something that was holding them down in Mara was removed. Something was holding them down. What is that thing that will not let you go? What is that thing that is holding you down? The Bible says, and they removed from Mara, removed from bitterness. Bitter experience, tasteless experience, ugly experience, a place of no testimony, a place where people cannot even rejoice with you. Removed from Mara, and they entered into Elim. The same people that struggled out of Egypt, they struggled to the Red Sea. From the Red Sea again, they entered into the wilderness. From the wilderness now, they entered into a place where they encountered Mara, bitter waters. It's the same people shortly after that God in his infinite mercy, because it was not by might nor by power, but it's in his infinite mercy through the prophetic word that came through Moses. He moved them from Mara and they entered into Elim. Who says your future? will not be bright. Who is looking at your Red Sea experience and they are drawing a conclusion? Who is it that is looking at your Egypt experience? Maybe they are looking and saying, hey, nothing is happening here. Nothing is happening. You are not seeing anything happen. But others are seeing something happen. 
Because what you want to happen will happen. Am I talking to somebody in this place? Maybe people are looking at you. From that wilderness experience, everything seems dry. They are looking at you from Mara, just like Naomi, that came to a point because of bad decisions in her life. She came to a point where she looked at herself and she said, this is Mara's situation right now. She said, this situation is not of God. There is a Mara in this situation. And she cried out and said, this one, I see a Mara in it. Until you don't identify your Mara, you will never be able to overcome your Mara. Until you don't look and say, this is not God's will. This is not how it should be. This is not what I saw in my visions, in my dreams. And you said, no, the God I serve doesn't take glory in Mara. He takes glory in Elim. You will stay in that Mara over time when you should have left Mara a long time ago. I've come to tell somebody, whether you are ready or you are not ready, if I be your pastor, I'm pulling you out of that Mara situation. This church cannot afford for you to be in Mara one more day. Your family cannot afford for you to be in Mara one more day. Your wife cannot afford for you to be in Mara one more day. Your husband cannot afford for you to be in Mara one more day. Your children cannot afford for you to be in Mara one more day. Your pastor cannot afford for you to be in Mara one more day. Come out of that Mara experience and serve the Lord with joy. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with liberty. Serve the Lord with freedom. Who is it that will not let you serve God? Serve the Lord with the sweetness of life with the goodness of life because God is on the side of sweetness we must enter Elim today Elim a place of 12 wells some people, they are just even looking at you and say, hey, hey, let me see if God will just even give them one. My God is not looking to give me one. My God has pressed down. When he is ready, it will be pressed down, shaken together, and run it over. What people have not seen is what my God will do. While you are busy prophesying and thinking in your heart that if God will just do small for me, my God ain't coming to do small for me because I don't serve a small God. I serve a big God. I serve a God of Elim, a God of 12 wells. When he gets ready to quench your test, he will quench your test. I said he will quench your test. Not the kind of one that when he quenches your test, it's only just you. People around you will be blessed. People around you will enjoy the goodness of God. It's not the one where it's just for you, yourself, and you. But others will be recipients. They will be partakers of what God is doing in this latter part of the year. Lift up your holy hands wherever you are. It's not by might, it's not by power. But by my spirit says the Lord, Oh my God and my Father, the God that parted the Red Sea, the God that brought Israel out of Egypt, the God that even as they came out of Egypt and went into a Mara experience, the God that heard their cries, the God that saw what they were going through, even in disobedience, God had mercy. Even in whatever it is they were doing, God still had mercy upon them and changed the waters from bitterness to sweetness. That God is here this morning. Lord, we ask of all of you and none of us, we ask you to turn every bitterness in our life into sweetness. Everything that has 
has gone sour. Every fruit that has become sour. Every business that has become sour. Every financial situation that has become sour. Every health challenge that has become sour. Every marital issue that has become sour. Instead of getting better, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Father, today we put an end to every worst experience. And we say, let the sweetness of life, let the 12 wells of Elim begin to open up now. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it begin to open up now for this commission, for these people. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. And look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, Mara is not the end of life. Tell them Mara is not the end of life. Hallelujah. Kindly be seated very quickly as I round up this message. The Bible says that even Naomi in the book of Ruth, she said to her daughter-in-law, she says, call me not Naomi, but call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. But one thing she failed to understand is that Mara is not the end of the world. I've come to realize because the same Naomi that said that let them call her Mara is the same Naomi who received restoration. Is the same Naomi who didn't finish the way she started. Is the same Naomi that God had mercy upon and changed her story. And that is why I know Mara will never last if you don't want it to last. Mara will never succeed if you don't want it to succeed. We are not called for a Mara experience. And even if we are in a Mara experience, it is only temporary. We are coming out of that tasteless situation. Tasteless business, tasteless marriage, tasteless issues in the name of Jesus. And God will make the water sweet again. 2023 will be a year of sweetness. A year of sweetness. It will not be business as usual. Some of you, you are not keying yourself into 2023. Maybe now 2022, you are just looking at. But if I was you, I will claim 2023 so that come rain, come sunshine, I will cross over into the next year in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of us, we are waiting for birthday. We are waiting for Christmas. You are waiting for what you want to be waiting for. The date you want it. I was telling somebody the other day. I said some people now, they will not focus because of Christmas Day. What Christmas Day for the believer is every day. Because of what Christ has done for us. We don't need to wait only for 20 feet, which is a day set aside. Yes, we're excited about it. But for me, with what he has done, I can't wait for 20 feet of December to be celebrating his birth. I can't wait for the 20 feet of December to be celebrating Christmas. Every day has become Christmas in my life. Am I talking to somebody in this place? Every day has become what? So you don't have to wait for December to get your promotion. You don't have to get to, to December to carry that new key of your new house. You don't have to wait for December to unlock and unpack some new gifts. Right now, there are some gifts God has for you. That is waiting for you to unpack and unwrap and tear and open and use it for his glory. Before December comes, somebody will be settled already. You are not entering December the way you entered it last year. You are going to be VVIP by the time you enter December. It will not be business as usual. Your promotion will be now. Your 11th hour miracle is now. I'm talking to somebody in this place. That which you've been waiting for, wait no more because God has it ready for somebody who can believe right now. Shout unto the Lord. I said, shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Mara is not the end of the world. So why some people, they will just sit down there. Faithless people. Oh, ye of little faith. And they will just be looking. 
And they'll be just talking. Talking their own interpretation. Using their mind to say what God did not say. Their mind to fuck on what God did not even put inside. And they are busy dreaming and talking. But God is busy doing his work for you. He's busy doing what no man can do. Their talk cannot change anything. Even if they want you to go down, you will still go up. Even if they want you to go left, you will go right. You no know, matter what it is, they say, if God says yes, no man can say no. If God says this door will be open, nobody can come and close it. No matter how they force it, God will still fling it open. Who am I talking to in this place? If God says Abusha shall be the land, Abusha will be the land. If God says this is your moment, this is your moment. If he says it's your turn, Esther, it shall be your turn. And no demon in hell can stop what God has predestined before the foundation of the world. Whatever it is that is not working can work. In a twinkling of an eye, things can change. Things can transform. Things can happen in the middle of the night. Right in the midnight hour. Paul and Silas, they were there praising the Lord. And all of a sudden, the prison doors opened. When people had given up, they didn't know that when God says yes, no man can say no. In Judges chapter 14, verses 14, the Bible says, Out of a bitter experience came forth sweetness. He says, Out of the eater came from meat. Out of the strong, the word strong means bitterness. He said, Out of bitterness came forth sweetness. And therefore, whatever has been bitter, whatever is bitter, has the capacity to turn around. Whatever is not working has the capacity to begin to walk in the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. And I noticed something before I close. And I have to bring it to your attention. When they left and they came, they were thirsty for water. And the Bible says that in verses, I think verses 25, they asked, what shall we drink? Now, they didn't realize even when there's water around them that what they are looking for is not far. What they are looking for, they have a God who has the capacity to give it to them. You see, so many people, they worry unnecessarily. You are crying, this place is not good. Ah, you are crying, this thing is not good. When God has put what you need in this place, you are sitting at the well, but you don't realize there's a well because your eye is blocked. What you are looking for, you think is outside, is inside. The water you are looking for is not far. And even if it is Mara, God has the capacity to turn the Mara waters into sweet waters. You see some people making, you know, wrong decisions, moving up and down. Instead of staying put, Knowing, standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord. Not jumping up and down. Because one day, one day, your faithfulness will be rewarded. Your loyalty will be rewarded. Your sweat will be cleaned. Your cry will be heard. Your prayers will be answered. One day, one day, that which you are believing God. Except God did not want you to believe it. But that which you are believing God has the capacity of coming to pass. Sitting down there crying for water. When water is not the problem. Somebody say water is not the problem. It is an error that you are surrounded with water. And yet you have no water to drink. You are surrounded with all the necessary things you need. And you cannot see it. I pray that whatever it is that has entered some people's hearts, that is making them not see, that is making them not hear, that is making them not discern, that God in his infinite mercy will open their ear, will open their eye, will touch their hearts to know that he has the capacity to turn things around. That means it doesn't matter what trials and tribulations I go through. God has the capacity in helping me to overcome it. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 verses 13 that no temptation has overtaken you 
except such as is common to man. But that God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Somebody say, I'll be able to bear it. Say, I'll be able to bear it. And that sometimes you see that when we go through some certain things, it's not for it to be a bad experience. It's for that thing to teach us, to process us. There are some certain situations that as, as I was going through them, I had to accept the reality that maybe because of where God was taking me to and is taking me to, I have to go through it. God may want to test your heart. God may want to test your loyalty. God may want to test you with the little things before he gives you the big things. And that every Mara experience may not be a bad experience. That in that Mara experience, we learn to depend in God and on God alone. In a Mara experience, you learn to pray like you've never prayed before. There are some certain situations, if we didn't go through it, we will not pray the way we pray today. We will not live the way we live today. We will not be faithful the way we are faithful to God today. If we had not gone through some certain experience, maybe some of us will not be this great as we are great today. Am I talking to somebody in this place? Somebody say, Mara is not the end of it. Say, Mara is not the end of it. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord said, I heard their cry and their murmuring. He says, and I'm going to turn their bitterness into sweetness. I'm going to turn everything that is not working. I'm going to make it to work. Because I am the God of mercy. I can show mercy to whom I desire to show mercy. This morning we pray for God's infinite mercy. To meet us in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And that whatever is not working will begin to work in our life. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. Stand on your feet wherever you are. Because I want us to pray. I want us to pray. And as we pray, I want us to look at that scripture. In Exodus 15, 25. In 15... Let's go from 25. Most of us know Exodus 15 for verses 26. Because that is where it says, you know, that he will remove sickness from amongst us. Is that not so? We know that one very well. But I want us to look at it again as a prayer point. Verses 25 says, And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. Who is it that cried? Moses, and last week I made you to understand, never you undermine the place of your prophet in your life. Believe the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Anyone where you see, say, no, they prosper, and prosperity not being a problem. You will know that those people, they don't believe in their prophet. They don't believe in what God is telling them. They don't believe in the set people that God has put over their life. And where there is no belief, there can be no miracle. Because what brings about the miracle is belief. It may not be the way you are thinking. It may not come in the size you are thinking. It may not come in the height you are thinking. It may not be wearing the gown you are thinking. But whoever is your prophet is your prophet. He says, and he cried unto the Lord. Had Moses not cried... Unto God. So how would the bitter waters? Is it just Moses drinking the water? It was everybody drinking it. But on their own, they could do nothing. And even if they cried, nothing was being heard. But when he cried unto the Lord, the Bible said the Lord showed him a tree. Last week, the Lord showed Elisha another instruction. On how to take salt in a bowl and to pour it into the bad waters. And today, the Lord showed him a tree. And you may look at it and say, a tree? That is why you have to have spiritual discernment. You have to be decisive in the spirit. It's not, maybe not, the answer may not be the way you are looking at it. And the way you are thinking it. And it may not be from the road you are thinking it's going to come from. Amen, somebody. 
it says, which when he had cast into the water, when he, Moses, cast it into the water, the waters were made sweet. Is that not so? And verses 26, the Bible says, and said, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do what is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought. So it was the one that brought it upon the Egyptians. For I, the Lord, I am the one that healeth thee. Maybe you think it's somebody that can heal you. Maybe you think it's going to H-Medics that can heal you. You have tried it now. You see how they go. He says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And after he said that, he said, they came to early. After this thing was established and settled, they now came to a place of 12 wells. We are going to pray this morning before I give you my own testimony. There you are. Neighbor, it they walk. Yeah. Somebody say, it they walk. Yeah. Say the word of God, they walk. Yeah. Say, it they walk, 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 it they walk. Say, they walk, it 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 they walk. 